Welcome to another episode of the Empowered Half Hour. And I say this every episode, but I am really excited about today's guest. I have with me Trisha Brooke, which I will share in just a moment how I know her and why I wanted her to come on this show. But Trisha is an international award-winning director, and she's founder of The Big Talk, which is actually how I found her. So Trisha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Becca. It is such an honor to be here with you. That's awesome. So I want to share with the listeners how I ended up in your world. So my business coach, my strategy coach, her name's Allison Walsh. And I was like, hey, I want to get prepped for a TED. Like, I want to do a TED stage. I already speak, all that stuff. And she's like, honestly, my best recommendation is to follow anything Trisha Brooke. She's amazing. She's top notch. And you're not going to be led wrong. So I always take her feedback and I enrolled for your masterclass, which we'll talk a little bit about today. But I was blown away by the content. And then I signed up for the Big Talk Academy and did your whole process. And what I just want to share with the listeners is that I have a lot of high achievers, leaders and things like that on this podcast. And what I find for the people who especially who are still maybe executive level in their career and not retired yet, is that they want to have more meaning to their work. And they also, they've learned so much on their journey and they want their voice to matter. They want to start getting a more meaningful and impactful message across. And I have the goosebumps as I say this, but one of the things that I really got from working with you, Tricia, was that I felt I was able to get to the heart of what I wanted to share much faster And that crafting of a talk of eight to 10 minutes, you don't have an hour to spread that impact across. You have this short window of time. And I really got just a little ton of value from that. So I just wanted to share that with the listeners and also share that with you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I appreciate knowing that you were able to get to where you needed to go faster. And I also think that I would love to hear how that process was for you in terms of understanding how to unpack all of your big ideas. Cause you speak a lot, Becca, and coming into my orbit in my community as somebody who's got already a lot of understanding and success behind themselves as a speaker. I mean, I would love to know what about this process and working with me was different for you. And thank you, Alison Walsh, by the way, you're amazing. (laughs) (laughs) So for me, when I'm crafting talks and I am a creator, so I mean, At any given time, I could have 20 talks in my head and like which one needs to be brought forward. And I'm just going to like let that hang for a second with the listeners and with you, because that's, I think, the thing that speakers or someone who's ready to start speaking, what am I going to talk about? Or maybe they don't know. But for me, I have so many concepts and it really, your process Each module that we went through helped me get clear on what is the core idea. We could talk about the big idea. What's the big idea? What's the core impact? What am I really trying to say? And I think the way that you have us brainstorm behind the scenes and go through your process, I'd never been through that before. And I'm always shocked when I learned something new and it really sticks because I'm like, oh yeah, I speak. I got this. And then I was in one of your comments, you're like, I don't know if you're ready to speak is actually what one of them was because I just didn't have like the new formula down. But once I got through it, it was so awesome. That's amazing. I think this is such great feedback as well because so many people, they think that they know more than they do or they're comfortable where they are. And so I love going through this process with speakers and thought leaders and professionals and influencers because, I mean, I look at this work through the point of view of somebody who's been in film, television, and theater for over 30 years. So there is a very unique lens with which I look at through this work. And it means being in a place of uncertainty and discomfort for longer than you're used to. (laughs) I got the goosebumps as you said that because I don't think I could have summarized it better than myself because I was like, whoa, I'm out of my comfort zone. And then on one of our calls, you and Angelique, one of your mentors was just like, go back through it. Like, because I was feeling frustrated. I just couldn't get it. And I took a deep breath and I just rewound. And then I was like, oh, I got it. 
I get it. And I really appreciate your point of view too, because I've been able to use a lot of those skills in speaking engagement since. And again, getting to the heart, like there's a, I mean, some speakers just speak because they want to make money or they're selling books and there's a different motive. But I would say most speakers rise into the vulnerability of speaking because they have a message, right? And I just appreciate you so much because your work, I feel, gets the speaker to their message. Oh, and that's what you. we need to do. <laughs> thank you. Yay. So I'd love to hear a little bit about how did you get to this point of creating the big talk and the masterclass and then the academy? Like, what brought you here? What's your backstory? My backstory is that I am from a small town in Arnold, Missouri, and I knew that I was going to move to New York City to pursue a career in dance. I had Baryshnikov posters all over my bedroom, point shoe posters. I was obsessed with PBS and Gelsey Kirkland and Swan Lake and the Nutcracker. And I started going to dance class. And my dance teacher started taking me to New York City every summer because I could get scholarships to study at the Broadway Dance Center, Frank Hatchett, all these incredible studios. And so I just knew that I was going to move to New York. So I moved to New York, pursued a career in dance. I did dance with Barishnikov. That was something I manifested. Wow. I love that. Yeah. And then toured all over the world in modern dance companies. I was a classical modern dancer. Moved into choreography in film and television, and then organically moved into directing and then writing and producing. And one day a friend said, I just landed a TED stage. I would like you to direct it. And I thought, oh, it's just like a one woman show. Perfect. We'll do script analysis, blocking and choreography. We'll work on performance and acting skills. And that's exactly how I approached it. And after our work together, she said, you should really do this. And I thought, do what? I'm just doing what I normally do with actors. And Becca, she said, well, there's actually a huge network of people who need speaking coaching. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. So before I knew it, word got out on the street that I was supporting <laughs> speakers. And all of a sudden I had all these speakers and no place to put them. And I realized what's the best stage for speakers, TEDx, TED. Sure. And so I applied for my license. I became the executive producer of TEDx Lincoln Square in New York City for two years. Now, meanwhile, I had zero online presence. I was not on Facebook. I didn't have an Instagram account. I was not in the online space at all. I was in film, television, and theater. We didn't need to market at all. So I realized I'm going to have to learn really quickly how to market myself because I had zero credibility in this space. Now I had 30 plus years of credibility as a director, sure. but nobody knew me online. So I quickly founded The Big Talk and started doing a podcast. I have a podcast called The Big Talk with Trisha Brooke and started talking about my process, talking about what I do, and then realized by producing TEDx Lincoln Square that I had access to amazing speakers and that I could really support them in sharing their powerful message. But I also knew that not everybody could move to New York City to work with me. And that's where I'm based. So when I thought, how can I support people all across the globe? I founded the virtual online speaker and thought leadership incubator, the Big Talk Academy. Now I was doing this way before the pandemic. So I've been producing online speaking events and virtual speaking events for five years. So what I realized is this is an opportunity for me to be able to support people all across the globe because ultimately in the process and the birth of my company and accessing my personal gifts of performance and directing, I can literally unite humanity through speech. And I do it through a theatrical lens. And that's some of what you got to experience at the yeah. masterclass and being a graduate of the Big Talk Academy. Yeah. I got the goosebumps as you said that, because that's what I feel like I left with is that deeper connection in my talks. And it's just so cool. I'm glad to so. hear that. It's also been something that has really expanded my way of thinking about community. And I've always had community, always been in community. When you're in a show, you become very close with the dancers or the actors. And 
when I realized that because I'm so vocal about community being one of our values, along with inclusion, respect, dignity, curiosity, collaboration, and love, what I have been able to do, and I'm very proud of this, is attract and bring together a diverse, inclusive community of people who are willing to be vulnerable because they know they're safe. Yes. I can attest that too. So if you're listening to this and you're like, maybe I should dabble, it is totally worth it because being able, it's very vulnerable. Like you mentioned the vulnerability, you stand up as a speaker, there's a level of vulnerability that you have to face, not only facing an audience, but then you have your online presence and all these other things that kind of happen as a result of. And being able to be surrounded in community too is really important. You see me post in the community all the time, <laughs> go in there. So you've really developed something wonderful. But I do have another question. So you shared a little bit about this in sharing the backstory, but what, were, what was something that you really had to overcome when breaking out and creating the big talk? I think the word overcome is probably slightly off And what I would rather replace the word overcome with is how I used my discipline, my grit, and my fearlessness as a dancer and as somebody who's been in the performing arts my entire life to be consistent with how I showed up. And that also requires patience, right? I was able to create an online presence over a period of time so that my consistent way of showing up would be the earn, no earn, like, and trust factor within my community. I'm consistent. I do not all of a sudden decide I'm an AI expert and then start marketing that. I help you identify your powerful idea. I help you talk about it and I help you learn how to perform it. That is what I do. That is what I still do. That is what I will always do. Yes. Am I making movies and working on Broadway shows on the side? Absolutely. I'm still very active in film, television, and theater. However, I know that by supporting people like you, Becca, who have an important message to share with the world, every big talk that we cultivate and that I help people birth, we're the doula, you give birth. (laughs) That's how we make the world a better place. We teach people to communicate effectively with dignity respect and love. And that's something that I am very passionate about. I do not believe we all need to have the same opinion. However, I do very strongly believe all voices matter. And I mean all voices. Yeah, I love that. And just echoing your what you say here in this podcast is also what you say behind the scenes. And I just love that too. But there is something that you said that I absolutely for me was like a mic drop moment. And that You wanted to switch out the word overcome with dancing with your fear and the consistency and all of those things that come up, because I think that's really just an important, not even important. I was going to say that's an important skill to have, but it's just such a positive reframe for people because the listeners, they're out there struggling with something right now, right? Regardless of what it is. And if they can like, oh, maybe I can dance with it instead. That was just so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I want to also share and kind of reflect what you said about the listeners being in a moment where it's challenging, right? Because as a human being, life is not easy. Being a human being is very difficult. I am very connected to source. I believe in the universe and source energy and that we are in a human form. However, we are truly spirits. And when we first started our call this morning, Becca, you were so generous and kind to me and asking me how I am. And that is because for anybody who follows me, gets my newsletter, listens to my podcast, you know that this has been a very challenging mm-hmm. time in my life because I have recently lost both of my fur babies back to back, one unexpectedly. And you had this experience during the mm-hmm. Big Talk Academy. So I did. I share this because being a human being requires us to be fully in our feelings. And so this is a challenging time for me. And I encourage anyone else who's listening or watching, who's having a challenging time, you can turn this into an opportunity to lead. And what I have been doing as a leader of my community is being very open and vulnerable 
What does it mean to be experiencing grief on this level? How does one navigate love and gratitude during a time of pain? What does it mean as a leader to teach others how to ask for help and how that's a strength, not a weakness? And this is what we do inside of the big talk. We think bigger. We think about how to teach you as leaders to lead by effectively communicating and by speaking from the scar, not the wound, and understanding how to have emotion without becoming emotional. That is what a true big talk speaker is all about. I love that you just wrapped up with that too, because as I reflect on my experience and modifying the talks, I bring a lot of enthusiasm. I'm a very bright and flamboyant personality. So my talks are pretty dynamic, but I have realized that through the work that you just talked about that I'm able to emote. I don't know if it's more maturely, but it's like controlling the emotion in a mature way. I don't know how to say it, but it, I really did learn a lot from you in the Big Talk Academy from that. So you had just mentioned that within the Big Talk Academy, you learn how to emote without showing all the emotions. And that was a really big takeaway for me because I am so such a big energy and flamboyant personality. So I bring a lot of that to my talks, but it allowed me to harness my emotions like that awareness that you shared allowed me to harness my emotions in a much more mature way. So I really love that you shared that. Thank you for saying this, Becca, because what you're describing is what I call performance mastery, right? Mm. Any actor who goes to the theater eight shows a week needs to understand how to perform because the audience is only seeing it the first time. That's why performance mastery is so important. And I'm so glad that you're able to talk about how you've learned now how to master your performance and how to have those emotions without becoming emotional, because that's the job of the speaker. You are there to take care of the audience. And if you become emotional, then they have to take care of you. Yeah. I love that. That's such a good takeaway. Listen to that. Write that down, listeners. No, that's a good one. All right. So I want to move into next. We kind of talked about it, but I want to ask it directly. Like, what's a big lesson that's up for you right now or a big aha? I think a big aha that's up for me right now is that everyone has a story and everyone also has a story in their head that they're not meant to share their story. And that's such an important thing for everyone to recognize is that everybody's story matters. And when you move into that place of ego, fear, and comparison, you are preventing the one person out there who is meant to hear from you. And if you prevent that one person from hearing from you, that is selfish. And I know that you are not selfish listener and viewer. I know you are not selfish. So that's why it's really, really important to recognize what you have to say matters. Your point of view is uniquely yours. It doesn't matter if you think my sad story, my trauma, my tragedy is not as bad as so-and-so's. That's comparison. There is someone out there who's experiencing exactly what you're going through. And maybe it's as simple as losing two fur babies. That's not simple for the person who is also experiencing it. And if you Correct. can share your story and you can provide them with comfort and hope because they connect to you and no longer feel alone, and you have achieved the goal as an influential voice and as somebody who is inside of our community. We do not want to feel alone. And by sharing your story, that's how we create connection. Yeah, I love every ounce of what you're saying because as I work with, I have a big corporate background. So I work with a lot of, I say, corporate high achievers, whether it's six figure salespeople, senior managers, or executives. I work with entrepreneurs too, but I find myself in the corporate space quite a lot. And I see so much second guessing from these people who have profound stories, have accomplished so much, overcome maybe migrating from a different country or workplace or toxic workplace environments, and they minimize their stories. And I am sitting here kind of like how you just said on this side, like, no, you need to share your story. It's so important. So, and that's a really good segue because I want to talk a little bit about the masterclass that's coming up. And the question that I want to ask you is, how could joining your masterclass empower the, our listeners? Oh, wow. Simply because 
we are going to help you distill your many ideas down to one potent, impactful idea. We're going to help you learn how to talk about the idea so that you could potentially speak about this at conferences, on big stages. You could speak about it more commandingly and captivatingly online if that's something that you do. And you're going to learn how to pitch organizers if speaking is something that you want as an outlet, as an additional revenue stream, as visibility and credibility to go along with your book. Speaking is organic marketing. Yes. And it is one of the best ways for you to get in touch with your audience. And for anybody who owns a business, who works in a company, we all need to increase our communication skills. And that's why joining the Art of the Big Talk Masterclass is going to support you. The other thing that I share is that I would only do this twice a year and it's two days of access to me. And so for six hours on day one and for six hours on day two, you not only get access to all of my training, which is live, I'm going to be on a live Zoom call. You're also going to get an opportunity to learn from several guest experts who have been on multiple TED stages who make living as a speaker. We're talking $30,000 a keynote. And you're going to also have an opportunity to get coached from me. So people who join the Art of the Big Talk Masterclass can apply to have coaching with me. So for two days, I give you everything that I possibly can so that you're fully set up for success. And it's $47. So it's a no-brainer. And I make it possible for everybody across the globe to be able to study with me because coming to New York City is not always an option. Working with me one-on-one -on -one is not always an option. But spending two days with me so that you can become a master, a masterful speaker, is something that I really love to do twice a year. And it's actually happening on August 2nd and 3rd. And all you have to do is go to theartofthebigtalk.com and register and come hang out with me. Yeah, that's awesome. And I would encourage you, if you have the time available, they register, be a part of it. I had attended both days and then obviously I went further with the program, but I think I was like looking at my notepad because I have it over here. I think I took like six pages of notes or something like that. I was like, <laughs> yes, it's jam packed. Yeah. And one thing that I'd love to talk about too is just like we've talked a little bit and a lot of it actually about how the speaking can benefit somebody. But I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and again, leaders who are trying to raise their profile. Like in corporate America right now, there is a large ask for anybody, really senior manager or hire, to have a personal brand, to start having a voice on LinkedIn. And it is absolutely terrifying to people because they have never been put in a position where they've had to share outside the company. And so this is a movement that's happening and there's not a whole lot of help and training. And I really think the masterclass, this is for any entrepreneur that needs to kind of rise up and start a personal brand or any corporate executive or high-end producer that needs to start a personal brand, this is a call out for you to do it and learn how to. And also, Trisha, I'd like to ask back, like, what are your thoughts? What would you say to a listener who is in that position of being asked to have a little bit more of a personal brand and how something like the masterclass could help them? It's such a great question. And I do understand the absolute terror when it comes to putting yourself out there, because once you decide to do that, you are putting yourself out there for feedback and for criticism. And there's a lot of unsolicited criticism and feedback that comes. However, most of it is good. And what I say to anybody who is struggling or digging your heels in when it comes to a personal brand. It's part of what is going to elevate your success. And most importantly, having a personal brand and being clear on who you are makes it easy for you to show up consistently. Think about wearing the same thing every day. When you don't have to think about what you're going to wear, why do you think Steve Jobs wore a black t-shirt every day? When you don't have to think about who you are and you know because you're clear on your personal brand, then people are going to trust you. You're going to be clear on who you are. You can show up consistently. 
And if you veer off course, you can just go back to, wait a minute, who am I? What are my values? What is my purpose? What is my mission? And I highlight this because values, purpose, and mission are very, very much part of my brand. And anybody who knows me knows this. So I would say for the listener and for the viewer, helping you identify values, purpose, and mission, along with uncovering those limiting beliefs, landing on your potent idea, learning how to talk about it. Everything that I'm talking about right now, we cover in this two-day masterclass. And I absolutely know it will serve you at the highest level. That's awesome. I got the goosebumps head to toe. I really hope these listeners take action because it was so good for me. That's why I wanted to bring you on. I'm like, I have to share Trisha's awesomeness with my people. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm so honored. (laughs) So, all right. Half an hour flew by, always does. Trisha, take a moment to share with the audience how to follow you, where they can find more. You just shared how they can stay in touch with you from social to website to registration, whatever you'd like to share, please do. Amazing. Thank you so much for this incredible conversation. I feel so proud to be on your show as a Big Talk Academy alum. And you all can follow me on Instagram at Trisha Brooke on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. And you can also go to trishabrook.com and definitely register and join me for the Art of the Big Talk Masterclass, theartofthebigtalk.com. It's on April 2nd and 3rd. And it's a two-day live virtual masterclass starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. And the replays will be available for a few days after, but because it's such a safe and intimate, vulnerable place, we do not make the replays available long-term. So definitely join me live. Awesome. Well, Trisha, thank you again for coming on the Empowered Half Hour. It was great to have you.